very important genera under the family Dipylididae, that is Dipylidium. Choanotania and Matroliastes will be discussed in another lecture. So I'm going to focus in this lecture the morphological features, life cycle, pathogenic significance, clinical manifestation, and finally diagnosis of Dipylidium caninum infection. For Choanotania infundibulum and Mastoliastis lucida, please see my lecture on tapeworm infection in domestic poultry. So we have finished the lecture on different parasites under the family Tainidae and Anaposophalidae. Today, that is in this lecture, I'm going to focus on uh, the genus Dipyridium under the family Dipyridae. So the Dipyridium caninum, this parasite is also known as double pore tapeworm. This parasite is one of the commonest parasites in dogs of the most part of the world. The final host for this parasite is dog, cat, fox, and occasionally human, particularly the children. This parasite is found in the small intestine of this host. And the intermediate host for this parasite is flea and the louse. Maybe you don't know what is flea. So, flea is a very tiny external parasite of few millimeters in size. Morphologically, their body is divided into head, thorax, and abdomen. This tiny ectoparasite bears three pairs of legs uh, on the body and third pairs of the legs are longer than first and second pairs, which enables them to jump. And this parasite can frequently change their host. Therefore, they are also known as temporary ectoparasite. Does that, that doesn't have wings on their body and the body is laterally flattened. As a result, they can move through the body coat of the animal very easily. And the louse is another permanently ectoparasite. That is, they don't leave the host in their entire life cycle. Hope you are familiar with this tiny ectoparasite. So in your third year first semester, when you when you will study veterinary entomology, you will come to know a lot on these ectoparasites. So the flea that acts as the intermediate host for this parasite uh, are Tenocephalus canis, this is also known as dog flea, and the Tenocephalus felis, this is also known as cat flea. Pulex irritans, this is also known as human flea, but it can also be found in dog, cat, swine, and different other animals. And some of the lice uh, also incriminated, sorry, incriminated to be involved in the life cycle of these parasites are Trichodactus canis, or it could be Heterodoxa spinizer, or Linognathus cetosus. Okay, the morphological features of Dipyridium. Can you remember the size of Tania solium or Tania sazinata? Those parasites are very big ones. They could be 3 to 4 meters or 10 meters. Even the Tania sazinata, you can remember, they can reach even up to 25 meters. But this parasite is not that big. This parasite, the adult type worm, that is a Dipyridium caninum, could be up to 50 centimeter long. And there is four suckers in their body. There is a rostellum here. Rostellum is retractable and bears three to four rows of small hooks. Therefore, this is also known as an arm cystode. What about their proglotid? So proglotid, particularly the mature and the gravid one, is elongated and oval shape, like a rice grain or cucumber or pumpkin seed. 
if you look at this picture or even this picture you can see one set of genital organ is here and another set of genital organ is located here so two sets of genital organ in each of the proglotid as there is two set of genital organ in each of the proglotid there should be two genital openings so one genital opening here and another genital opening here they opens marginally that is uh, along the side of the proglotid and you can see this is an ovary and just beneath the ovary there is another structure which is known as vitelline gland so due to their uh, this sort of appearance, appearance um, like um, they could be seen as a bunch of grapes sitting both sides of the proglotid and you can see this tiny dots they are also known as testes and they can occupy the entire proglotid so this is the summary slide of morphological features of dipylidium so i have already mentioned that that adult parasite could be up to 50 centimeter long and there are four suckers in their body rostellum is retractable and on the rostellum there is three to four rows of small hooks therefore they are also known as arm stored so you can make a list what are the parasites that have hooks on their rostellum because this is very important for your bivalvosi and the proglotid the mature sorry so the mature and the gravid one is elongated and it um, it look like a rice grain or cucumber or pumpkin seed and there is there is two set of genital organ one set is here and another set is here two genital opening one is here and another genital opening one is here and you can see that this is an ovary and just beneath the ovary there is a vitelline gland and they are resembling like a bunch of grapes sitting on each side of this proglotid and testes that occupies the entire volume of the proglotid so the life cycle of dipyridium caninum as usual the type of the life cycle is indirect the final host is dog cat fox occasionally human and this parasite is located in small intestine. The intermediate host for this parasite is different flea and lice. That is, uh, the, and these uh, parasites are found in the body coat of the dog. And the infective stage is the cysticercoid. Time required for the completion of this life cycle is around uh, three to four weeks. So this parasite is located or live in a small intestine of the final host and produces gravid proglotid. These gravid proglotid are detached and they either migrate to the anus or voided out through the feces. Each proglotid contain around 20 eggs encircled by an embryonic membrane which is also known as a capsule egg sac or egg packets later larval stages of the flea so the larval stages of this flea infected after ingestion of this egg containing hexacanth embryo in flea and lice Cystis are quite developed in their body cavity within few months and and then dog and cat infected after ingesting flea or lice having cystis are quiet. 
man particularly the children infected by an accidental ingestion of flea or lice while playing with them afterwards cystic cirrhosis are released in the intestine so uh, released in the intestine of the final host and a mature parasite developed from that cystic cirrhosis so some of the important things you should remember the larval stages of the flea will be infected by the ingestion of the eggs not by the adult flea directly it is due to the differences in the mouth part of the larva and the adult flea the larval mouth part is twin type whereas the adult mouth part is piercing type but the thing is once the infection is acquired by this larval stages upon its molting to pupa and then adult the development of cystic cirrhosis will be continued another important things uh, that is the warm temperature helps in the development of the cystic cirrhosis as lice are permanently ectoparasite that is it remains in the host body throughout its life get the warm temperature and cystic cirrhosis develops within a month but in case of the flea the development of cystic cirrhosis takes uh, several months Uh, so in, in flea it takes longer period of time because larva and the pupa will be found on the ground with variable temperature so once again the life cycle of diphelidium caninum infection the final host is the dog cat and the man man is the accidental host and the parasite live in their predilection site that is in the small intestine and they produce gravid proglottid this gravid proglottid either may pass out through the feces or they may remain on the perineal region so the gravid proglottid that uh, are with the feces they are disintegrated to release the eggs to the environment and afterwards the larval stages of the flea and the lice they actually ingest or acquiring uh, the infection after having these eggs and afterwards the development of the cystic cirrhosis will be uh, continued in the larval stage followed by the pupa and the adult stage that is the adult flea and dog and cat or the man uh, will be infected after ingestion of this flea accidentally and in there uh, uh, afterwards this cystic cirrhosis will be released in the small intestine of this final host and from that cystic cirrhosis a mature parasite will be developed and will start producing gravid proglottid so the pathogenesis of diphelidium caninum infection in dog and other animals so before starting the pathogenesis we may have a look at video first so what you can see one of the gravid proglottids is coming out by crawling to the by crawling and this is the perineal region often you can see some of the gravid proglottids are stick to this area and so just changing the pointer so uh, the adult parasite shares gravid segments you know that these gravid segments can be either passed out through the feces or they may crawl to the perineal region due to this crawling on the perineal region or perineal or anal region this actually uh, produce a very unpleasant discomfort to get rid of this unpleasant discomfort dog try to drag their anus to the floor or try to bite their 
uh, anal region. As a result, uh, there should be some injury to the anal region or tail region. And some of the clinical uh, signs are produced and we are going to talk about those, those clinical signs uh, in a minute. So the clinical sign during Dipyridium caninum infection in animals and men. I have already mentioned that the other parasites are less harmful and they can be tolerated. Maybe the hundreds of parasites can be tolerated without producing any clinical sign. But in case of heavy infection in young animal, that is in puppies, some non-specific abdominal symptoms uh, can be found. They are constipation, diarrhea, pot-bellied appearance. So what is pot-bellied pot appearance? So due to the huge load of parasite in, their, in the intestine of the final host, the entire abdomen get protruded. So that is called pot-bellied appearance. And other clinical sign, signs include abdominal pain, unthriftiness, dragging of anus, and hair, hair loss from the perineum and tail region. In man, the common clinical sign includes perineal itching, diarrhea, and abdominal pain. So the diagnosis of uh, diaperidium caninum infection, as is well, you should go for checking the clinical history and clinical sign or findings that I have already mentioned. But one of the major things you can consider while diagnosing diagnosis of this parasitic infection is the presence of gravid segments or gravid proglottid on the feces or perineum. You can see a lot of gravid proglottid on feces and another in this picture you can see a gravid proglottid uh, is uh, on the perineum. perineum. And just wait for a moment, we will play another video. So you can see a lot of gravid proglottid on the feces and they are moving. And then you should go for um, laboratory examination. So the sample that are sent to the laboratory, you should go for the gross examination of the feces just to th check the presence or absence of the gravid proglottid with the samples. And if you get one or two, you should first check uh, the morphology that I have mentioned earlier. The mature segment or the gravid segment is like a rice grain or cucumber seed or pumpkin seed, uh, that would be all right. And if you have uh, further, you can check uh, the genital organs or the presence of uh, how many pores, genital pores on either side of the uh, proglottid, that also uh, help you to identify that this is this gravid segment from Dipalidium caninum, not from other parasite. And then uh, with the feces, you can go for coproscopy, that is examination of the fecal samples uh, followed by uh, examination of those smears under the microscope and what you can see you can see the egg packets or egg sacs or egg, egg capsule that will contain around mm, 20 eggs in each of the egg capsule or egg packets and that is the confirmatory diagnosis of this parasitic infection so these are the reference books that I have used uh, during preparing this presentation. And I have also used uh, some video and internet material images from internet. And thank you all for watching this video.